This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back to Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin here at our Restoration Nation. Right now, I'm standing on the lot where our house was originally built. Stay tuned for more of that story. We have such a special treat for you today, one that I have been so anxious to share with you. I didn't know that we'd ever be able to, but here we are. Not only do we have an architectural masterpiece, a home that shows us how to preserve and live in a historic structure, but one that has a lot of sentimental value to Kevin and I as well. Today, we're sharing with you the Bonner Hendrix house. Behind us, about 100 yards, is Scotty our own house. Scotty did not start out over there. Scotty started out right here. So Mr. Bonner, the former owner's grandfather, was a very successful businessman here in the city of Conway, Arkansas. Around the turn of the century, he opened the first land title company here in Conway. And when he became slightly wealthy, he built Scotty right here on this lot. He owned this entire block of land. In 1925, his oldest son married. And when his oldest son married, they picked our home up, put it on logs, rotated it 180 degrees, hooked it up to a mule team, and moved it where it sits now as a wedding gift for the son. That is our home. That is the home that we have spent the last 12 years meticulously restoring and bringing back from the brink. Well, what happened to this land with Mr. Bonner after he'd moved his original home? By this point, Mr. Bonner had accrued a great deal of wealth. He was one of the largest companies here in Conway, Arkansas. And so he built for himself and his family a masterpiece of modern design, this English Tudor beautiful home. And we have the great privilege of taking you through this home that was occupied by the daughter of the man who inherited Scotty up until just a few weeks ago. She and her husband Leroy in their late 80s have relocated to a retirement center and their beautiful home and the two plus acres it sits on are going up for sale. But this is gonna give us an opportunity to give you a ton of lessons about this period in architectural history. So come inside with us. Here we are in the monumental front living space of the Bonner Hendricks house. Now, very quickly, before we get fully started, I'm gonna make a statement and you're not gonna comment about it. This is the way I'm dressed today. 
because I had surgery six days ago. I got up, I got ready because I wanted to give you the architectural history of this beautiful home. This was as good as I could do. I shouldn't have to explain it. I'm just giving you a little bit of backstory and now we're gonna move on from that, all right? So let's talk about the house. This home retains so many of its exquisite original features. As a matter of fact, there's only one original feature that I'm aware of that's been removed from this house. And those that are here are in absolute pristine condition. This house, to me, looks like it did the day that it was built in 1925. So let's talk about some of the fantastic features you're gonna see throughout this house. And it's also gonna give you an incredible example of how to maintain your historic features without removing and replacing with modern materials. And one of the first things I wanna show you is the way that Francis and Leroy retain their beautiful original windows. Every window in this house is not only original, but it's functioning. You can see the gorgeous wavy glass. They have their original hardware. On the exterior, they have placed storm windows. So that's gonna give them the insulation that's needed that everybody worries about, the energy efficiency. You've got those with those storm windows on the outside, but it doesn't impact the look of the historic window at all, and it doesn't impact the function nor does it impact the historic integrity of this beautiful home. They've also maintained all of their original plaster in this house. It's an absolutely glorious condition. And in every one of the formal rooms, you'll see that they still have their picture rails. And you'll see that Ms. Francis has left several of her picture hooks in place. They're still here, ready to go for your pictures. We have these beautiful French doors, and I wanna call your attention to the door hardware. This is, I think, a chrome-plated door hardware. I'm not sure. It has almost a spiderweb design, but an absolutely stunning 1925. You can see we're right in that Art Deco period. So even though we're in a Tudor Revival house, we have whispers of other pop culture coming in all throughout this house, and I absolutely love these. And these are extant on every single door in this house, except for the few where they use less formal crystal doorknobs. Underneath our feet in the formal spaces, we have gorgeous oak hardwood flooring. It looks like it did the day it was put down. I'll show you some interesting features when we go into the private spaces having to do with the floors. So come with me to the front of the living room because I wanna show you the 1925 answer to storm windows. This is an architectural dinosaur. We rarely find this extant, and when we do, it is a treasure. What we have here, obviously from the exterior, you can see we have the original metal swing out windows that would have been used in the summertime for ingress and egress. These would have been able to be opened. But in the wintertime, they would have caused some airflow. You could have gotten some cool breezes through here. We have interior storm windows. You can see here the original hooks where these hang on. So in the wintertime, these are hung into these doors. In the summertime, they lift out and are removable. Here you have your little bolt, bolts the top in. This unbolts and is removable as well. And we have the full set. This iteration of storm window was very common, really from the Victorian era up until the 1950s, but we seldom see them present. So once again, another example of this house looking like it did the day that the Bonners moved in around 1925. One of the things that I love about this period of architecture is the heavy use of the multi-pane French door. We have these in our 1933 colonial revival. You see them very, very, very regularly in these Tudor revivals. Um, and this is one of four of these beautiful doors located in this room. This one exits out onto a beautiful Four Seasons room and from there to the Port Cochere. So let's go take a look. Now, I have to show you something. Obviously, this screen porch is magnificent, and here in the South, you would spend so much of your time right out here. But the attention to detail on this house, the money that was spent back in the day, this is an exterior screen door. It was always meant to be just ingress and egress. No attention really ever paid to this space that opens onto the port cochere. But if you take a look at the other side of the screen door, there's a crystal doorknob. So 
top of the line all the way around. Something else fun about this space, as you go out onto the Port Coast area, you look across the nearly two acres of land that this home sits on, including its little garage with its workshop. But I see a pretty pop of periwinkle right over there. It's really, really clear. That's our house. You'd be living this close to our little Scotty. Here we are in the dining room, which you actually see when you enter the front door, which I kind of love. You get a split view of the living room and of the dining room. It shows you the way that these houses really float and function. And as we all know, open floor plans are out. After COVID, everybody wants to have spaces, private spaces where we can do individual functions separately, keep our dirty dishes out of the line of sight of our living space. And these historic homes really show how that flow actually works beautifully, not only in living, but also for peace of mind for the people who live in the house. One of the things in this room that I absolutely adore, again, we had these in our own home, our colonial revival up the street are the original sconces. You can see on these sconces, the original imprint pattern, as well as its multi-chrome finish with all of its beautiful original color. They're pristine, they're clean, they look like they've been restored, but I guarantee you these look exactly like they did. They've not been removed, they've not been altered since the day they were put here. Absolutely love this. Now, we're gonna talk about a little something that's another comment that I don't wanna hear. I don't wanna hear anybody whine about the painted woodwork in this house because we know from the woman who lived here her entire life that this woodwork in this house was always painted always painted. If you see an unpainted finish, it was originally unpainted, but what we see in this house painted, the cream trim, the cream moldings, they were always painted. So please no comments about, well, it just ruins me, it for me that there's painted woodwork. If it does, that means that you're not open-minded about the true history of architectural evolution and when things maybe were and weren't painted. So I'm going to take you into what is maybe my favorite room down here, the butler's pantry. Come with me. Okay, so the architectural historian in me is absolutely geeking out over this space. I just gave you a little lecture about the painted woodwork in this house, right? And how it's always been painted. One of the comments that we get when we show the video of our own home, Scotty, is complaints about the painted woodwork. I think that goes to show you that from the beginning of architectural history, people have been expressing their own preferences in their homes because the same people who built our house and decorated it in 1925 when it was moved are the same people who built and decorated this house in 1925 when it was newly built. So when our home was moved, it got a little bit of an update, an arts and crafts movement update, but all of the woodwork was painted. That's what we discovered when we did our house. Same thing in here. So that shows that the Bonner family preferred painted woodwork in their spaces. Now back to this space. Why am I literally losing my mind over this small room in this house? It's this light fixture. I need you to look closely at this light fixture, please. This is the original 1925 polychrome light fixture. But what about it is so spectacular? Other than the fact that it's just a spectacular light fixture, this is its original silk tassel. You can look closely and you can see the mechanism that runs all the way through the braid work. You can see that originally there's still several of the original colors extant in this silk braiding. There's some pink, but you can see if you look closely, there are little hints of a green as well. So this light fixture looks just like it did a hundred years ago when it was put in here. We also have an exquisite pair of small French doors that exit onto the back patio. And of course, an original butler's pantry. And you may not be able to tell on the video, but this is my favorite paint color in a house. We call this bleen. It's not teal, don't tell me it's teal. It's neither blue nor green, and it has an incredible balance of the two, so it's really hard to see. Is it green, is it blue? We don't know. Stunningly done in this butler's pantry and in the trim in this room. Now, something else that makes this house really unique. You transition out of the public space, which has beautiful oak hardwood floors, into a private space, a butler's pantry. These floors are pine, lower quality, 
less expensive, same width board running the same direction, but we're saving money because this was never meant to be a public space. Now the function of this room, what a fantastic study, sewing room, breakfast room. This has incredible functionality in our 21st century. And this is the room that has the exit down into the basement, which is in beautiful condition. And we'll take you down there and show it to you. Here we are in the kitchen. Now we know that under these rolled linoleum floors, which are completely appropriate for the period of the home, they did a good job selecting the flooring because this is what would have been used in a 1925 kitchen. But we know that those pine floors continue in here. So if you so felt compelled, you could very easily take these up and have pine floors. This is the room in the house that's been the most modernized and it does break my heart a little bit, even though it's been done beautifully. We have quartz countertops, these are maple, solid maple cabinets. They're done in an appropriate style, but we know because Francis and Leroy told us that originally there was a freestanding double basin drain board peg leg sink that sat right underneath this window, probably a Kohler, and I'm gonna say circa 1925. It is sitting in the Faulkner County Museum as part of their antique kitchen exhibit. And I can tell you that if I were gonna buy this house, I would be making a very sizable donation to that museum so I could reclaim that sink and put it back where it belongs. But overall, this is a beautiful, functional, appropriate kitchen, and it has such a fun detail in it. Are you ready to see? It has its original ironing board. Now these ironing boards pulled out this is a super deluxe fancy model. Not only do you have the large board for ironing your pillowcases, your sheets, your table linens, and of course your daily wear items, but you have the small board, which would have been used. You could run men's collars on the small board. You could run sleeves through the small board. So this is a super fancy ironing board here in the kitchen. And from the kitchen, you exit up the servant stairs up to the second floor. But we're gonna take you back to the front of the house to see the downstairs main bedroom and bathroom, and then talk a little bit about the interesting mix of styles that we see in this home. Really amazing that in 1925, this home was built with a bathroom downstairs and two bathrooms upstairs. And when I tell you this house had all the bells and whistles, it had all the bells and whistles. Are you ready to see something I've never seen extant? I've seen it in old plan books, I've seen it in old magazines, but every one of the bathrooms in this home has it. It's hard to have a window in your bathroom, right? You want privacy. Well, all of the bathroom windows in this house have privacy windows so that you still have your beautiful English Tudor influence window visible from the street, but your privacy from the inside. I love this. We're back in the entryway and I really wanted to spend some time here with you to show you one of the things that has always made Francis and Leroy's house an architectural just wonder for me. This home is Tudor Revival. It has the appropriate pitches and gables. It has the false half timbering. It has all of the exterior features of a Tudor Revival home. Then we come inside and we start getting a little bit of everything. We get everything in the kitchen sink sort of thrown in this house. And what we have here with the original light fixture that's in the entryway, the original light fixture we have here, and this wrought iron banister, we are seeing the influence of the Spanish revival movement that we really don't get here 
in this part of the country. That is a style of home that we see really heavily on the West Coast. During this period, the 20s and 30s, especially, we, we think of them as old Hollywood homes. We get a lot of Spanish and Mediterranean revival, and that's where you're gonna see a lot of this type of ironwork being put into residential homes. But the Bonner family was very wealthy, Perhaps they'd taken a trip out to California and Mrs. Bonner had seen those new styles of the Spanish Revival being used. And she decided that instead of using wood for her handrail and banister, she wanted to use some Spanish Revival wrought iron. And she echoed that in her entryway light and in the front entry light, which are beautiful and clean and look like they were put in yesterday. in one of the original upstairs bathrooms. Underneath my feet are beautiful hex tiles. We have this stunning tub. And once again, we have our privacy windows. Now, these windows are so indicative of that English Tudor revival period. These lattice diamond shaped windows are called carols or carries, just depending upon which architectural historian you speak to. But these are such a part of this architectural design period and here we have them a double set in this bathroom but we have privacy windows over them i am just in love with these All of these rooms are incredibly spacious and they all have ample storage, really unusual to find in a house of this period. But my personal favorite aspect of the entire upstairs portion of the house are the abundance of windows. Each room is filled with windows and out of those windows, you have the most magnificent view of the beautiful landscaped grounds.
some other really interesting just architectural little tidbits in this house. First of all, we have another incredible Spanish Revival wrought iron lighting fixture here on the landing, but the flooring underneath my feet, the attention to detail, I'm telling you, they thought about everything. The bedroom behind me is one of the original main bedrooms in the house, and the bedroom at the end of the hall is probably the original main bedroom of the house. And these two were probably the rooms for the children. The two main bedrooms and the hallway and the stairs are oak flooring. The other bedrooms are pine flooring. So we saved a little bit of money in these other rooms upstairs. You'll see in the backyard four of these stunning verdigris columns that have been used as a bit of a folly. Those columns came from the first Faulkner County Courthouse that burned down around the turn of the century. And they've ended up here in the backyard of the Bonner Hendricks house. We tried to buy them, they're cemented into the ground. They'll be here longer than the house will be. I know I've had a lot to say to you today about this home, but this home is incredibly special to us. We were so blessed to have Frances and Leroy as really the perfect neighbors for 12 years. Tears were shed when they got in their car and left for North Carolina. So we feel very protective of this home. We have a lot of sentimental attachment to it. So I'm gonna warn you right now, I will protect the historic integrity of this home and this land with a pitchfork and torch if I have to. Leroy especially was passionate about historic preservation. He served as the president of our historical society for many, many, many years. And is part of the reason that we have the few existing historic structures in downtown Conway that we still have. His absence will be deeply felt. And of course, Miss Francis was simply a joy. They were beautiful neighbors to have. And now we feel a burden of responsibility to help protect their home. We know that was very important to them. They talked to us about it at length before they left. So if you think you are a worthy successor for Francis and Leroy Hendricks and their beautiful Bonner Hendricks house, if you're the ones who are ready to take on what is really basically a new built 1925 home, 
The link is in the description below. Remember, we're not the realtors. We do not guarantee or represent this home in any way. We just wanted to share something truly remarkable and truly special with you today. And we hope you've enjoyed this journey back in time with this one of a kind masterpiece. We hope to see you next time on Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin. Do you know what I like about Squarespace? I like that it gives ordinary people like you and I the ability to make extraordinary websites through the use of their easy to use templates. Squarespace is always making their user experience easier and easier. Now they've got this fluid engine and it's a next generation website design system that is easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. You start with the best in class website template and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology. They've also got an asset library, which allows you to upload, organize, and access all of your content from one place. We use it for our online store, where we can sell products through there, we sell all of our merch through there, or you can use it for a point of sale if you've got a brick and mortar store. So this is what I want you to do. Please go to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to go live, go to squarespace.com slash ourrestorationnation and get 10% off a domain or website.